what stands out in a 2-0 start this season. Efficient on offense, using the long ball to account for most of the runs. Efficient on defense, turning three double plays to limit the Marlins' opportunities. And most efficient on the mound, 18 innings without allowing a run to cross the plate. Today, a chance to sweep and don't expect anything to get in the way. Just a little bit west of the Navy Yard. So here at Nationals Park, it is game three. The Nats are looking for the sweep, and you might say, all hands on deck. Here comes Denard Span, Ian Desmond, Ryan Zimmerman about to file his lumber away. The Nats trying to get some offense going themselves, but they haven't needed a whole lot those first two games. Bob and FP, welcome to getaway day. Maybe a sweep day. It would be a great way to start the season with Cincinnati looming tomorrow, but this pitching staff has been amazing so far. Well, they've been amazing because it's a team that's historically given them problems. I know it's been cold. It's not conducive to hitting, but with Steven Strasburg, the starting rotation, Gio Gonzalez, both with a couple of shutout performances to start the season. I feel like you'd rather get off to that start, obviously, than get rocked by a team, but how good have they been? You see the numbers right there. Eight Ks. Pitching the contest. Let the other team put the ball in play, and the bullpen's just been outstanding. When you talk about two shutouts to start the season, and that's just the 13th big league team in the modern era since 1900 to begin the season with back-to-back -back shutouts. The 2002 Diamondbacks, the last team to do it with guys by the name of Randy Johnson and Kurt Schilling. So as advertised so far for the Nationals. So Jordan Zimmerman doesn't need to do anything fancy. Just keep doing what he did last year. FP, if this guy gets some run support this year, he might be one of the top winners in this league. Yeah, just pound the strike zone. He's not going to walk you. If you're a Marlins hitter tonight, you come up packing, and we'll keep an eye on the changeup tonight from Jordan Zimmerman. Pitching and just enough hitting, but lots of defense. Zimmerman saving a run on opening day. Suzuki gunning out Juan Pierre last night. You name it, the Nats have done it with the gloves and the arms, and they're trying to sweep the fish right out of D.C. Late 4 p.m. matinee for you. A lot of folks are still coming down Half Street from the Navy Yard Station. Train celebrating its 100th anniversary. Irresistible financing offered. It's hard to stop a train really hard. So 51 
Winds, not much of a factor. They were blowing pretty well last night, but we are under quite a bit of cloud cover today. The Marlins in the first two games are batting a buck 23 against the Nats pitching staff. Placido Polanco over 2,000 hits in this series, two of them in seven ABs, and he's four for 11 career against Jordan Zimmerman. Jordan is one and three with a 443 ERA in his career against the Fish. A lot of different hitters and players over the years he's faced and he's underway with a ball right down the middle we are underway right on time at 405 yeah, coming off a year where he reached the 30 start plateau for the first time in his career five and oh with a three six four in his final 11 starts at nats park last year and he led all of baseball with a 163 average with runners in scoring position so fastball slider curveball change for jordan we we'll keep an eye on that change up tonight a pitch he worked hard on in spring training. He goes right after Pierre and this will be a tough play. He'll make it beautifully on a speedy runner. Zimmerman with the bare hand to start the game. A good athlete making a good play right there. Let's set the defense for the Nationals behind Jordan Zimmerman tonight. Harper span worth in the outfield. Desmond Zimmerman on the left side. Espinosa LaRoche on the right side and Wilson Ramos doing the catching. That'll bring in Placido Polanco and today batting in a more customary for him number two spot. Good play. Good athlete off the mound quickly. Bare hands. And you always have help on the back end with LaRoche. Placido Polanco seven at bats in this series as a cleanup man. Had a base hit in four trips last night. Boy Zimmerman comes out firing quick work rate. When Jordan gets into a rhythm, he really gets things going. The hitter, you have to defense all over the field. We'll do that on occasion. Dumped a single down the first base line last night. Paul Schreiber has the plate. Chad Fairchild, the crew chief, Jeff Kellogg, and Eric Cooper, first, second, and third. Reds, by the way, won their game over the Angels today, 5-4. to four. And That's on their way to Cincinnati to take on a 2-1 and one ball club tomorrow night. That first slider of the day from Jordan Zimmerman, good one. 88 miles an hour on the black. Late break, tough to pick up. 2-2 two -two pitch with one out. That might be the second busted bat of the game. Desmond scoops it up, two down. It is your favorite time of the game. Time for your AFC and intelligence report on Jordan Zimmerman. Experiment over. You know, one thing, experimenting with a changeup during spring training. Another thing, using it in a game when the bell rings. Bring some cheese. Wisconsin guy doesn't care if it's cold. He's going to bring some heat, as you just saw right there. And keep the line moving. First guy's got the job done. It's up to you to keep that momentum going in the starting rotation. Zimmerman now against Giancarlo Stanton. It's been an interesting matchup. Stanton three for 13 career against Jordan. Every one of those hits have left the yard. That's a great fastball in on his hands. Target it again. Why not? Nats have held Stanton to a walk. Three strikeouts. One for seven in this series. Well, that's that slider that just disappears 89 miles an hour. Giancarlo Stanton picking up fastball, thinking that's a heater all the way. Watch how late the break is. Stanton in pull mode. He's been in pull mode this whole series. He's best when he's thinking up the middle the other way. 2-2 Two -two pitch. A little bit low. I'd be in pull mode, too, if a guy just threw a two-seam fastball. 95 running in on me the pitch before that. <laughs> Jordan looking for his 25th career win today. 82nd start. 24 and 26. Full count and he missed. Well inside. Let's go inside the numbers. Find out why the government and employees choose STG Inc. Look at this. We know about the shutouts. Three runners in two games beyond second base. Only eight batters over the minimum of 54 you can face in two ball games. 
And of course the Nats have used the home run to score their runs the defense and it's happened quickly. I think that's a combination of a lot of things. You, you leave spring training warm weather you come to some cold weather baseball. If you're the Marlins and you're facing one of the best staffs in all of baseball. The swings aren't where they're going to be in about a month. So the Nats doing what they're supposed to do as a staff taking advantage of. Some hitters that are quite locked in and some great conditions to pitch in. Steve McCaddy's pumped with what he's seen the first two games. 0.00 ERA leads the league, by the way. I think that always will, right? <laughs> At least tied. No balls in, two strikes to Greg Dobbs, who gets a start today. He's had some success against Jordan, a home run, three for eight career. He came in last night for Casey Kochman, who will go on the DL tomorrow. And the Marlins will make a move to replace him on the roster after they get to New York tonight. The 0 2. Man, we are seeing some first inning jamage here. Severe? Uh, Pierre was really severe. Yeah. It was almost off the meter. Polanco's was severe. Mm -hmm. when, the, when the bats are busting, that's severe. That means a bat is on the ground. Take cover immediately. That's right. That's not a. It's not a watch. It's a warning. Danny Espinosa and Jordan Zimmerman around the walk to Stanton. Three ground ball outs. Now the Nats pitchers doing it again. The Nationals five runs they haven't given up a thing. Yeah guess who's in the lineup today. The only guesswork is the number eight spot and it's Wilson Ramos. Ryan Zimmerman got hits last evening in his last two at bats. Triple right field RBI hit up the middle. So Ryan is two for seven in the series and the Nats will face Wade LeBlanc left hander brought through the Padres organization as a starter. He was a reliever. And last year he appeared in four games against the Nationals as a reliever three of them in July one in August. They're a little bit short on starting pitching so he's in the rotation as their number three guy. It's his first time in an opening day rotation. And nine starts in 2012 for one eight ERA on March 20th he faced the Nats in spring training. And he gave up six runs on seven hits with two walks and five innings of work. Command control guy fastball cutter curveball change. Fastball run in the upper 80s. Yeah, you'll see a lot of upper 80s, but not much 90 plus today from him. He's from oil country in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Went to Alabama, and the Padres took him in the second round in 06, facing Denard Span. And Denard's been on the base paths four times in two games with two hits and two walks. Career 294 hitter versus lefties. Nice. Waited for that breaking ball and bounces it down to Greg Dobbs who battles that ball right to the bag. Must have been spinning wickedly on it. Let's set the defense for the fish tonight behind oh, Wade LeBlanc. Yeah. Pierre Luciano standing in the outfield. Edge of Aria Polanco on the left side. Solano Dobbs on the right side. Rob Brantley 
back with the gear on tonight for the Marlins. Yeah, first base, suddenly a concern. In fact, the Marlins, counting Casey Kochman now, their top three first basemen in the organization, all on the DL. Wow. So if you've got a mid, give them a call. What's their number? 8675. <laughs> no, no. I'll tell you what their number is. 72342, two, that double play yeah. on Monday. That was fun. Jason Worth, 0 for 8 to start the season, but he did a couple of things last night to help the Nats win the game defensively. Talk to us about that after the game. And he said he's really enjoying playing alongside Denard Spann. They are communicating well out there. And as you've made the point several times, three guys who could play center field. Everybody wants the baseball, so communication will be vital for those three. Yeah, he made a good point to me before the game tonight, talking about the weather and how it's not conducive to hitting. Saying the only time it is conducive in this kind of weather is October baseball, <laughs> because your adrenaline's going so much. You don't yeah. care if it's 20 below. You don't feel the weather, but early in the season, blood's thin coming out of South Florida. Bryce doesn't care what the temperature is. He's going to hit. One ball and two strikes. Target in. And LeBlanc trying to bust 86 on Jason. Now it's even 2 2. As he flips those off speed pitches away, Worth keeps flipping them out of play. Modest crowd in the ballpark, but it'll grow as the afternoon goes on as we get used to these four o'clock starting times. Two balls, two strikes still. Busted bat, great at bat. Jason Worth, first hit. He's going to round the bag big and make Juan Pierre hustle a throw back in. So Jason Worth is in the scorebook with a knock. And checking in with the base hit early, his first one of the 2013 campaign. And you figured the block would come in sooner or later with the sequence of most of the pitches on the outer half. He comes in right there, worth strong enough to loft uh, over Polanco's head. And just like that, there goes the no hitter. <laughs> well, here comes the hitter. Bryce Harper, four for his first eight. That was Worth's first career hit against LeBlanc. Bryce will be looking for his. Slaps it to right. Shocking. He's five out of nine. Southern Ants first and second trying to make some first inning noise here. I feel like Bryce Harper's so locked in right now that that's just a lousy single. He's going to throw that one back. <laughs> Aggressive early in the count. Seeing the ball big. Using that hole created by Jason Worth. You see Greg Dobbs having to hold Worth on. There's always that hole right there. Sometimes it's a trap door, but when you hit the ball as hard as Bryce Harper, base hit, first and second, one out, game on. He is awesome early. A couple of good base runners out there. The Marlins will play Zimmerman toward right center. Ryan gashed one up the middle for an RBI last night. He's been swinging early in the count in this series. Spotted that one heading low. He's one for one career against this lefty. And, of course, they play behind the runner at first. Marlins looking for a ground ball. Ryan trying to put the Nats on the board. This is interesting. They've had one inning in this series with two hits. That was the eighth inning last night. Harper and Zimmerman. So there's the D. Tells you how they're going to pitch him. And if they pitch him that way, they're pitching to Ryan's strength. Right center. A good speed on the bases right now. LeBlanc very deliberate to the plate with the runner on second. Jason Worth looking to go. That one must have had some late tail on it. Right off the end of Ryan Zimmerman's bat. Way to LeBlanc, 28 years of age. 25 games, nine starts for the fish last year. Parts of four years with San Diego before that, including 25 starts in 2000. 
10 when he went 8 and 12. Zimmerman rocks it, but it's hooking. That's taken some great swings early here. STG Inc. on Bryce Harper inside the numbers. Ended last season. Starting this season with three training in between, and he's working on a hitting streak. Find out why government and employees choose STG Inc. These guys in beer league softball watching right now that don't have those numbers. 2 2 target away. Zimmerman well hit. Center field. Ruggiano back. It's over his head. It's off the wall. Worth the scoring. They're going to send Harper. The throw is on target, but it gets away. Harper takes a shot to the face, and the Nationals lead 2 0. That ball went right through Rob Brantley, or they might have had Bryce Harper. And the fans stand and cheer. He's going to go back and pick up his helmet. Ryan Zimmerman, RBIs now in two consecutive at bats. A great swing by Ryan Zimmerman. This ball was hammered. Ruggiano tried to decoy the runners. Look at the big leg kick, get it down early. And you guys know I get excited about good base running. Bryce Harper on the backside knew this ball was going to drop. Watch Bryce Harper right here. As soon as he sees the back of Ruggiano, he takes off, and that creates an extra run. Trying to catch Jason Worth on the backside. Trent Jewett very aggressive. Brantley holds on. He's got a chance. But when you look at where that hit Bryce Harper, you wonder if he had his helmet on. That might have added some protection right there. That helmet comes off every time he's run the bases. Let's see. Let's see. The helmet stays on right there. I feel like he's going to have a little added protection Ooh. from that elbow by Brantley. I mean, he dropped a serious elbow on him. And as a left-handed hitter, Carp, that's right where your ear flap is, protecting you. And I feel like if that helmet stayed on, that might not have been so painful for Bryce. Helmet on right here. You drop the forearm shiver. And I think that the damage would have been done to Brantley's arm and not to Bryce's face. On a ball inside, two and one. Adam LaRoche now. Three consecutive hits. It well, but it's tailing back to Juan Pierre. Almost plugged a gap with that one. Running is Zimmerman. Wide throw. And if there's something we've noticed so far about Trent Jewett, he is going to be a very aggressive third base coach this year. Well, that's more of Ryan Zimmerman's read, Carp, because the play's right in front of him, so he's looking at it himself. And, and he's a very underrated base runner. We talk about Jason Worth, we talk about Bryce Harper, Denard Spann, but Ryan Zimmerman, as smart as a base runner that's out there, he'll read balls in the dirt, he'll take the extra base when it's given to him. Even though advance into third with two outs, not that important. I mean, it takes away the ball in the dirt. Maybe you leave something up to Ian Desmond right now, but how about Adam LaRoche? He needs to hit one right off the hands for a base hit yeah. because he's barreled everything up so far this season. Nothing to show. Ian Desmond now trying to make it a three-run inning. Funny to say about an undefeated team, but it's the biggest inning they've had so far. Two runs on three hits. And Ian could put some serious icing on the cake. He's one for six to start the year. Hits it down. That's a backhand by Polanco. Good inning for the Nats, though. Jordan Zimmerman came out firing, and so did the Nats offense. Two runs.
Assassin, brought to you by Ocean City. Visit Ocean City, Maryland for Spring Fest, May 2nd through 5th. Find out more at OCOcean.com. And by Honda. Get a great deal during the really big spring event now at your Honda dealer. Beautiful look at the Jefferson Memorial today. Bryce Harper evidently feeling okay. Took a shot to the right side of his face. It's going to take more than that to knock him out the way he's playing right now. And so here we go, top of the second. Justin Ruggiano, Rob Brantley, Donovan Solano for the Marlins. Jordan Zimmerman, because of the walk to Stanton, a rather long first inning, 18 pitches. This ball really hit hard. It's going to be out of the park, and the Marlins have scored their first run of the year. Justin Ruggiano gets them on the board. Well, to end the game last night, Ruggiano off Soriano hit a bomb to straightaway center field, sent Denard Span back to the warning track. He had to come in a little bit once the wind caught it, but I felt like on a normal night that Ruggiano would have tied the game with that swing. And you see his first at bat right here. Well, opposite field piece to put the fish on the board for the first time, as you said, all year. Yeah. 91 games, 13 homers, 36 RBIs last year. He's got some serious pop. And that's where the big guy right handers hit him over there. Here's Rob Brantley 0 for 3 on Monday. And a Jordan Zimmerman fastball 2 and 0. So Jordan had that long first inning 18 pitches. Now he's gone home run ball one ball two. He gave up 18 homers last year. Most of them would be solos over the course of a season. 43 walks against 153 strikeouts. Well, not bad when you start the season with a 19 inning scoreless streak by your pitching staff. So for now, and that ball is rocked hard up the middle by Brantley. The 1963 St. Louis Cardinals, who started their season with three straight shutouts, is safe. And FP, you mentioned the Diamondbacks. 63 Cardinals and Bob Gibson was not one of those pitchers. It was Ernie Brolio. Ray Washburn, two right-handers, and a left-hander, Kurt Simmons. Something tells me you're at all three of those games, by the way. Uh, kind of young. I doubt if I made it to all three. <laughs> Ticket prices for a 10-year-old, a definite issue. <laughs> <laughs> Breaking ball outside to Donovan Solano. Little trivia, though. Ernie Brolio was the guy the year after that traded for. Lou Brock. A deal the Cubs still regret. Well, speaking of great hitters throughout the course of baseball, we have a cool split screen that we're going to show you tonight on Bryce Harper and Babe Ruth and how they both hit with their back foot in the air. It's eerie how similar both swings are at the point of contact. And we're not saying that Bryce is Babe Ruth, but when you talk about the great hitters through baseball, it's very rare that you see a guy with his foot in the air. And we're going to show you Bryce Harper, Babe Ruth side by side. And it's pretty cool. Then as you and I were chatting, we came up with a couple of other left-handed hitters who did that. Ted Williams, Stan Musial. Mm -hmm. Frank Thomas comes to mind. He's right-handed, however. Isn't uh, that totally opposite of the old Charlie Lau theory? Stay back as long as you can. Well, well Charlie Lau was a guy that was about weight transfer, so I figured, you know, Frank Thomas was a Charlie Lau guy. But just the back foot off the ground at contact, very rare in baseball. It just means you have a tremendous amount of torque in your swing. Marlon's taking some swings here. This will back up Jason Orth. They'll have it for the first out. Ruggiano, Brantley, and Solano all hitting the ball pretty well here in the second inning. Presented by Luna. Call today for the Luna double. Get your second room of flooring free at 877-241-LUNA. Pitch count getting up there. Ten more this inning. Runner at first, one out. A Daney. Echeverria, the shortstop, off to an 0 for 5 start with three strikeouts.
Pretty good hitting pitcher on deck, by the way. Wade LeBlanc can swing it. 26 hits and 99 career at bats. Taking some good swipes at that 93 mile an hour fastball. Well, I touched on in the open. If you're going to face a Jordan Zimmerman, no matter who you are, you know he's a strike thrower. You just pick a side. He works the ball in and out with his fastball. Slider usually way to right handers into lefties, but as a hitter, you like facing the guy who's around the plate. There's not a whole lot of mystery involved. You know he's going to be somewhere over that dish, and you're aggressive. That was a breaking ball that he waited for. Three hits in the inning. And sometimes carp guys can throw too many strikes. That whole effectively wild is never in play when no. Jordan Zimmerman pitches. Yeah. Well, in this very booth about four years ago, Mr. Knight and Mr. Dibble had quite a debate about that between the set and the booth. And I think the point that Ray was trying to make was. Too many strikes over the heart of the plate because major league hitters will do damage with that. If you're not hitting corners and the ball's right over the dish. LeBlanc, good hitter. 14 career sacrifices takes ball one. Extremely sorry I missed it. Oh man. I'm sure it's still out there somewhere on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a presidential debate last year that came anywhere close to that one. And then LeBlanc taking a rather half hearted stab at that. One ball, one strike. If he bunts it to first, Adam LaRoche is right in his face. He's got to play it third. Yeah, that's why he was trying to bump it right to Ryan Zimmerman. Anything over by LaRoche, Ryan's ready to retreat. And Rob Brantley runs good at second base. Usually when you think of catchers, you don't think of good speed. So I don't think Wade LeBlanc has to be that fine with the bun. He's got good wheels on the bases right now. Just get it down. And he'll get the job done. Echeverria can run. Brantley pretty fast. Don't have to be that much toward the line. Just bun it softly and you get the job done. One two pitch and that fastball stood him straight up. Evidently he knew he struck out before the umpire told us he did. Took a stab at it. Two outs. Jordan Zimmerman first strikeout today. Find out why the government and employees choose stginc.com. Pitch usage and strikeout percentage last year. Well he gets a lot of strikeouts despite the low percentage of sliders huh? Yeah. And he's thrown one changeup that I can remember so far in the game to Greg Dobbs and got a swing and a miss with it. Ahead of Juan Pierre, busted his bat first time. Jordan Zimmerman's slider so far in this game almost acting like a cut fastball. Not a little, not a lot of break on it, not a lot of tilt on it. Just kind of spinning in there. When he's locked in, that thing will disappear under le lefty's bat at his back knee. You know, I asked Kurt Suzuki about that last night, cold weather. Did he want to see how Geo's curveball was working before he started calling? He said, well, Geo's curveball is so good. He said, I just started calling a lot of them right from the get-go to get that established. Jordan doesn't have the big breaking ball of a Gonzalez. <laughs> For that matter, who does? But you know catchers thinking process along with the pitcher with these breaking ball fastball combinations. How about that brain trust. Strasburg Geo Suzuki. Two balls one strike. And Pierre hits it well out to center but that will hold up for Denard Spann. So the Marlins get their first run of the year on a monster blast opposite field by Ruggiano.
Look at all this offense. 2 1 Nats, each team with three hits. Espinosa Ramos and Jordan Zimmerman coming up, and uh, that's three regulation hitters. So come to the ballpark. You'll see some offense, defense, great pitching all year long. Get your 2013 season plans and go to nationals.com slash 2013 to make that happen. Don't forget when you come to the ballpark this year, put your red on. Show that in attitude. I agree. Once it's warm enough and you don't have to wear your, your black or your blue coat. Danny Espinosa looking for that first knock. We'll hit from the right side here. Go for one career against LeBlanc. Danny Espinosa, 234 with 14 home runs last year. And that gets him by a step on a cutoff play by Polanco. Next up, Wilson Ramos. Wilson had a good day opening day. He handled Strasburg in the bullpen well. Had a base hit and a walk. And hats off to Kurt Suzuki for the good job he did in the second half of the season on into the postseason last year. But now that Ramos is back, FP, you just get the feeling this is a complete ball club. Well, anytime you got a guy in the eight hole that can be a 20 plus home run guy, hit for average, hit for power, catch like he does, as young as he is. I'm going to throw a Kurt Suzuki in there every other day. Some teams wish they had one good catcher. The Nats have two. Ramos, a little liner over the mound. Solano picked it up on a hop. Two quick outs. Pitchers with bats. Worthy of note since last year. So we add in Gio from what he did. Fourth home run. Look at the doubles. The RBIs. These are just good athletes. I mean, they work at it. Like we joked with Gio after the game last night. I mean, that's what they work on, really. Home run derby every day. But they work on getting their bunts down, doing the little things, and then they have fun and let it loose. But they're all good athletes. Yeah, this guy homered in the Marlins ballpark last year. How tough of a place is that to hit the ball out? And Jordan did that. They dropped one in the Clevelander. The Pinocchio Dolphins went crazy. <laughs> oh, I thought you forgot. <laughs> never, never. I can't wait till we get there. <laughs> Our buddy Tommy Hutton, TV for the Marlins, says no changes to the ballpark this year. For now, they're satisfied with the way it played last year. Like the Grand Canyon. Yeah. Some parks play like national parks. Crustaceans notwithstanding. And various types of seafood. Three balls and two strikes. LeBlanc trying to retire his fifth in a row. And Jordan hanging tough. Now ball to start the game off the bat of Denard Span. Great hacks, all of them. This is a spring day in Auburndale, Wisconsin, by the way. Oh, this is beach weather. Who are you kidding? No long sleeves here. Oh, he's going to get called out on a pitch near the inside corner. LeBlanc, first strikeout, so two innings in the book. The Nats on top of the Marlins, 2-1.
Babe Ruth, we just thought it was pretty cool when you watch Babe Ruth swing on the left. Watch his back foot come off the ground at contact. You see right there. Now we'll move over to Bryce Harper on the right-hand side, and we've seen this before, at contact, foot off the ground. Why is it? They're both hitting off a firm front side. It creates so much torque and power throughout the course of their swing that it's almost impossible to keep that back foot on the ground. If you did, there would be so much pressure on the hip it couldn't take it. So guys that swing violently like that have to release the back side off the firm front side. And if you've ever watched Tiger Woods hit a driver, same kind of deal. His back foot comes off the ground. He creates so much club speed. Same with Bryce Harper. And I thought it was eerily similar. Hmm. Checking that out today, that Babe Ruth and Bryce Harper both do that. We talked about guys that do that throughout the course of history. Ted Williams comes to mind, Stan Musial. Great hitters like that. Frank Thomas from the right side. Really interesting stuff. When you think about if you really kept your foot planted and you swing that hard, what kind of damage it would cause your hip throughout the course of a career. And it's just almost impossible to keep that cleat in the dirt when you swing as violently as Bryce Harper has when you create that much bat speed. Top of the third, Placido Polanco. One ball, two strikes. Jordan's been jamming him here. Bounced out to Desmond first time. Left side again. Ian goes backhand. Plants, fires, and look at Adam LaRoche. He is amazing with that mid at first base. Well, I'll tell you what he's doing to the rest of these infielders. He's spoiling them for the rest of their career. <laughs> I mean, when you know as an infielder that I got to get to the baseball, plant and just get rid of it, and the guy on the backside's got me 9.9 .9 times out of 10. If Ian Desmond, Danny Espinosa, and Ryan Zimmerman ever have another first baseman, <laughs> they're going to be spoiled the rest of their lives. Man. The rest of their careers. Finally got that gold glove last year. I'd like to see him win two or three more. You throw a short hop over there to somebody else. They wait a minute. That used to be an out every single time. What are you doing? Jordan Zimmerman, long at bat, walked Giancarlo Stanton first time up. Bounces that one. Two balls, one strike. Jordan threw about half of his first inning pitches to this batter. Rather high pitch count for two and a third so far. And he is a horse. He could pitch all day in a day like this. Yeah, one of the better sliders he's thrown today. 86, late break. Good frame by Ramos. On the Mercedes-Benz pitch track, go to MBUSA.com. Check them out there. Mets got a run in the bottom of the ninth, but they lost their first game of the year moments ago. Padres beat them. So the Nats and the Braves are the unbeaten teams in the East. Phillies play Atlanta again tonight. 3 2 pitch. Walked him again. There will be a lot of announcers say that about Giancarlo Stanton this year. It's up to the rest of the Marlins to do some of the damage so that you would have to pitch to him. It's also up to Giancarlo Stanton to take his walks and not force the issue, not become frustrated, mm -hmm. to know that he doesn't have a lot of protection behind him. I mean, it's just being honest, and you can't force the issue if they're not going to pitch to you. Greg Dobbs pulled the ball on the ground to Danny Espinosa, first time up. The best I ever saw at that was Barry Bonds. He could walk eight times in a row, and that ninth time, if you made a mistake, one mistake, it was in the water. But he never forced the issue. He took what you gave him. He was on base all the time. He scored tons of runs. If you're going to walk him ten times in a series, you're going to walk him ten times in a series. He never went out of the strike zone. But he also pounced on mistakes. Broken bat and a flare to left for Harper. Two down. Jordan Zimmerman is breaking some Marlin bats today. Yeah, he's going to get a call from Greenpeace at this rate. Oh. Let's check this one out. Trademark. That's the weirdest feeling as a hitter. You have 31, 32 ounces in your hand, and all of a sudden you have about an ounce in your hand.
Ruggiano goes up slugging again, hits the ball hard. He's done it twice. One was a homer, not that time. Denard Span, bottom of the third, will lead off. The Nats on top, 2-1. Daily departures between D.C. and New York. Book now at Amtrak.com. Game summary. Jason Wirth is in the book with a hit. So is Harper and Zimmerman after him. Just got a two-run rally going. Jason Wirth with his biggest hit of the year. And Chris <laughs> Harper with another hit. And this one was absolutely pummeled by Ryan Zimmerman all the way to the fence in center. Played nicely by Justin Ruggiano. Hit the cutoff man. But Bryce Harper with a good read off the back of the bat. Puts a forearm shiver as he scores the second run for the Nats. You know what that swing tells me about Ryan Zimmerman? Shoulder, cold day, extension. He got down and got that thing and creamed at the center. LeBlanc in his career has had trouble with left-handed batters. Span's going to beat the ball, and then they flip it down the line, and that's going to give him second base. Wade LeBlanc tried to flip it with his glove. It's going to be a base hit and an error on the pitcher. That is a thing of beauty to start an inning. Well, a lot of times you'll see lefties, off of lefties, bring it with them to the second base and make them feel it. But Narn Span is bringing it right down the line. I think you see Greg Dobbs right there in no man's land. If he charges it and fields it, Span's safe. So he figures LeBlanc's going to try to make the miraculous play. Trying to pull up Mark Burley out of his book right there, but mm. Denard Span leadoff man on perfect bunt. Boy, just a couple bunts like that a month, and it takes a 250 hitter, makes him a 290 hitter. That was a beautiful thing. So here's Jason Worth. So left-handers bugging LeBlanc again today. Came into this game career. Left-handers hitting 316 against him. Right-handers 258. So here's Worth. Base hit first time. Jason had a great at bat, fouled off some pitches, busted his bat, dropped one into left field. Span, by the way, on base five times now in this series. Three hits, two walks. What a changeup for the first pitch. I think uh, Jason was looking for 88 and he got 73. See, Worth with a big breath right there, trying to get that swing out of his head, regroup. tried another one. Jeep unique brand of freedom you'll only find in the full line of Jeep vehicles. Visit Jeep.com to learn more inside the numbers. Pitches per plate appearance. That'll yeah, make you work. Yeah, and Adam Dunn when he was here he'd take a lot of walks along with the home runs and the strikeouts. 1-1 one, one, target in. But compared to 2011 Bob it seems like he was Far more aggressive Jason Worth last year, even though he saw that many pitches. 
You remember his first go round as a Nat, taking a lot of fastballs right down the middle early in the count, taking them quite frankly late in the count too. But last year, way more aggressive. Worth walked 74 times two years ago. Your point well taken. Last year, 42. Although he didn't play a whole season, but about the same ratio. But he sure seemed a lot more aggressive. Only half a year last year, but he hit 300. 300 at bats. Two balls and a strike. Thing about this lineup, you're not looking for a little punch and Judy action here to move a runner over with Worth and Harper. You're looking for guys to drive the ball and maybe set up a big inning. Worth jammed and he gets it over the dugout. Strike two. Well, Bryce Harper, five out of nine to start the season. Already has a knock today. Couple of knocks. One to the head. <laughs> a knock and a knot. Time off speed pitch 71. Worth able to tip it. That's the first out here. Second K by LeBlanc. On to Cincinnati and tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Dan Heron, Homer Bailey. Saturday, 1 o'clock game. Ross Detweiler, Mike Leak. And then a marquee matchup on Sunday with Steven Strasburg going against Johnny Cueto. Then Adam Dunn and the White Sox will be here starting Tuesday. Oh, yeah, it's April. It's interleague play time. <laughs> Probably be a couple of number 44 jerseys in the yard. So here's Bryce Harper. Sizzling single through the right side hole. First time he would score on Zimmerman's double. Trent Jewett aggressively sending him with one out. Into a bang bang play in more ways than one at home. Harper lays off. That was a quality strike right on the corner. Nice way to start. It's a nice way to start in Little League. I was going to say, Dimitri Young would say, them's high school numbers. Yeah. Harper out of playoff to the left. One ball and two strikes. Boy, what a good looking lineup this is. Left, right, left, right, left, right. Switch, right. One through eight. By the way, Davey Johnson said today when they go interleague on the road, he'll bat his DH ninth. Doesn't want to upset this apple cart. And there's Harper with a base hit. Span speeding home. And the Nationals lead 3-1. to one. Ball gets away. Harper to second. Second Nationals hit. And the second Marlins error of the inning. Bryce Harper, third RBI. But check out the pitch sequence to Bryce Harper. Can you say locked in? First pitch from LeBlanc, 86, little cutter on the outer half. Then he goes off speed, curveball. Back to the fastball right down the middle, little location four. I mean, you can't do that to a great hitter that's locked in. Bryce Harper makes him pay, and I think Trent Jewett went to the Bryce Harper runs of they tag you school because he is very aggressive early in the season with everybody. That ball hit hard to a guy with a good arm in right field. Trent Jewett, knowing that Denard Span can run, did not hesitate with one out to send him. Air on Th Stanton's throw. So the runners trade places with one out. Ryan Zimmerman lining a double to dead center first time. Breaking ball low. Now the Nats. With only seven outs made today, have Wade LeBlanc nearing 50 pitches. 556 to 600. 
<laughs> Freddie Freeman leads the league, by the way, batting 714. <laughs> Harper going one way, but nobody tucked in behind him on the step off by Wade LeBlanc. He was rolling. You see him right there with his cleat marking his spot. That's where he's going to start his lead. Stole 18 bases last year. High 2-0 to Zimmerman. Nationals five hits already. See that line he drew right there in the baseline. That's where he wants to start his primary lead at. That's his comfort zone. So when his right foot hits that line that he drew, that's as far as he wants to go. And if you're Solano at second base, you don't want to cheat up the middle too much because Ryan Zimmerman hits the ball so hard to that side of the field. Two balls, one strike. This all started with a butt base hit. There he goes. Pitch outside, and Harper is out. Good release quickly by Rob Brantley. Yeah, nice play by Rob Brantley. Wade LeBlanc doing a nice job of keeping Bryce Harper. Didn't get the best jump. We'll see it right here. But Brantley, a guy that's been working hard on his defense, more known for his offense, with a great throw right there to third base. Right on the money. Polanco putting the tag down. Perfect throw. Horizon Fios on the Exmo. Switch to 100% fiber optic. Supercharge your internet speeds. Zimmerman will take the walk. Third base runner of the inning. I'll tell you what, Carp, the more you watch young Rob Brantley, the Marlins have themselves a catcher. Swings the bat well. Does a nice job behind the plate. That throw right there. He's made a couple nice throws to second base, too. Well, they got him with Jacob Turner. In the Omar Infante Anibal Sanchez deal from the Tigers. That's FP. I'm Bob. Good to have you with us on a chilly afternoon at the ballpark. But right now, the way the Nats are swinging the bats, warming things up. Here's Adam LaRoche. A hard luck 0 for 7 to start the season. Almost plugged the gap in left center last time up. Right now, the one thing the Marlins are unhappy about is that Turner who was considered the prize of that trade languishing in the minor leagues unable to harness control and some other issues they thought he'd be in the rotation as a young stud by now fastball in the zone strike one but they sure have to like what they see from 23 year old Rob Brantley a great shot of everybody doing their homework on the bench. Anytime you have a left-handed pitcher facing your dugout, you can see a lot when he goes into the stretch because he's facing right towards you. You know, watch him put his hand in his glove. If the glove wiggles, where he goes in his hand. Guys trying to pick up any advantage they can get off any pitcher any time. You always love to be in the dugout where the guy in the stretch is facing your dugout. You can do a lot of homework that way. And good hitters don't just sit on the bench and tell stories. They're always studying, looking for an advantage, an edge any way they can, and that's the view they have right there. Some guys go in the glove at different times for different pitches. Some guys fan their glove. I mean, there's all kinds of things you're looking for to get an edge. Adam LaRoche is going to hit another ball out of the park. Foul. <laughs> he hit one closer to the pole last night. I mean, he is really swinging the bat well. Shift is on. Solano, short right field. Echeverria up the middle. And the count's back even.
thing we notice about Wade LeBlanc first inning this inning really slows things down with men on base. Well, the Marlins have been trying to speed up his tempo a little bit. He's been working on it in spring training. They want him to work faster, but good point right there. He's definitely slowed down. 2 2. We'll go to a lot of off speed stuff, and now this is big. It'll give Zimmerman a head start at first base with two outs with Ian Desmond next, we hope. Adam LaRoche fly ball left field tailing toward the line and Juan Pierre grabs it in the corner. Tough luck of Adam LaRoche continues. He carried the ball club early last year. Nats have picked up another run. It's 3-1 on to the middle innings. Bryce may have a shiner by the time we get on the plane tonight for Cincinnati. Jordan getting run support today. So come out and see dirty uniforms, hard hitting Nats baseball. Had more than a shiner in Cincinnati last year. <laughs> That's right. So did the dugout wall. Get your 2013 single game tickets right now. Some of them start at just $10. Nationals.com slash tickets. Rob Brantley base hit up the middle first time he's thrown out a base runner. He's having a Kurt Suzuki type day here. Good looking young player. Won't be 24 till July 14. They list him at 62205 from San Diego. He was a Tigers third rounder three years ago. Made his debut at the Marlins August 13th of last year, and the Nets got to see him down the stretch. Bryce Harper to his right, easy out. And now Jordan Zimmerman has retired six of his last seven batters around that walk to Giancarlo Stanton. Well, how about this? Michael Morse is at another homer. Four on the year, and those three games the Mariners have played. In that cavernous Oakland Coliseum where you played. That's not a home run park. Well, yeah, yeah. chronicled Michael Morse in the distance of his home runs all last year. He doesn't hit a cheapie ever. <laughs> they brought in the uh, fences in Seattle this year, too. Yeah, he had one to right last night, flipped his bat, stood at home plate, and barely got out. But four home runs in four games. Not a bad start. Good for him. Up the middle. Can Desmond get there? Yes. No chance for a throw, though. Base hit Donovan Solano. An example of the range possessed by Ian Desmond along with Danny Espinosa. Yeah, he's got the ability to get up and throw a lot of guys out on this play, but the speed of Solano, 
Good choice by Ian Desmond. Just to put that ball in his pocket, but nice stop. Yeah, maybe three years ago he pops up and tries to make that throw, but he knows now. He knows. He's got a double play guy next to him and some outstanding other defenders on that infield. And here's a Danny Echevarria. He hit the ball hard up the middle first time. All of the Marlins singles have been right through the box. The Ruggiano home run was to right field from the right handed batter. So they've stayed on the ball fairly well against Jordan today for their four hits. I'll tell you, Jordan, I've watched him now for the last four years, actually parts of five years now. He is a, he's old school. I mean, he gets out there, gets the ball, he's ready to work. He pitches like a lot of guys used to back in the 60s, the 70s. Big, strong right-hander. I'm coming right at you. I'm going to work quick. Things are going to happen in a hurry one way or the other. Yeah, I think at times he gets in a little run of maybe working too fast to where it gets away from him a little bit. Ah, great stat there. He throws a lot of strikes, period. But look at the first pitch percentage, 68%. 9 of 17 today inside the numbers brought to you by Jeep. And their full line of vehicles. Unreachable for Espinosa. Solano scampering toward third. And a great play by Denard Spann to cut the ball off and the base runner. Boy, the Nats have kept the Marlins from taking extra 90 feet several times in this series. Yeah, got to the ball quick. Anytime you get to the baseball, the base runner that plays right in front of Solano. So he's watching. And look at Spann close ground, looking over his shoulder, saying, nope, nope, nope. I think if you get to the base before Denard Span gets to that ball, you think about going, but he got there at the same time, put the brakes on. That's the base runner's decision all the way. That was a good one by Solano. Nice play, Denard Span. Here's LeBlanc, who was up in a situation just like this. First and second, one out, and he struck out trying to bunt. Yeah. That ball was foul tipped for a strike. I mean, he could really help himself out again right now in another big at bat, but he does not look comfortable. With the bat in his hand so far in a sacrifice bunt situation. He's had well over 100 major league plate appearances. Lays that one down well. There's a play at third. The Zimmermans make it. 1 5 on the force out. Well, that's one of those things where LeBlanc's thinking, I'm not going to strike out again, Button. I just want to get one down. He bunted it too hard right back to a very good athlete on the mound. And Jordan Zimmerman, who spins around, finds his target, Ryan Zimmerman, and gets the lead runner. And hey, that's not an easy play when you spin around like that. It's hard to pick up the base. How many times have you seen a pitcher throw that one down the left field line? So good play. Yeah, and if he doesn't throw a seat over there, he doesn't get the runner. That was Donovan Solano running. Two on, two out, top of the order. Juan Pierre. And I think this series, FP, has shown us one thing early in the season. Playing great defense isn't about the spectacular play all the time. It's worth picking up a ball in the corner, in the deep corner, keeping a double from being a triple. And just little things like that. Span cutting the ball off in center. And now that play with Jordan to Ryan. In a one-run game last night, Jason Worth holding Polanco to a single on a ball that went down the right field line. Got to it quick. Denard Span closing ground right there. Bryce Harper with a good throw to the plate on opening day. Juan Pierre, ground ball. Danny Espinosa and Jordan Zimmerman, thanks to his own defense and his buddies, out of the inning. Marlins have stranded six in a 3-1 game.
By the way, you got to see the video when you come to the ballpark that introduces the racers. They oh. start in the Midwest, make it all the way to D.C. So Abe went down, Teddy down, oh. William Howard Taft down. Oh. And why tall Tom didn't just step over the line, don't know. Maybe he did break the tape in time. The lip skid never gets old, by the way. Ian Desmond, first pitch swinging, bottom of the fourth. Ian, ground ball to third, first time. Off to a one for seven start with a walk. Nets and the Marlins each with five hits. Wade LeBlanc started this inning, 58 pitches, 36 strikes. He's at 61 now in the bottom of the fourth. And Ian Desmond fans. That's his third K. There's just a little 85 mile an hour cutter with two strikes under the hands of Desmond. LeBlanc career record 19 and 27. 62nd career start is 80th appearance overall. No record or ERA up until this time against the Nats in four relief appearances last year. Great first pitch changeup for a strike to Danny Espinosa. She didn't hear about it about 45 minutes before the game today. The Nats agreed to a minor league contract with Chris Young back in the fold. I'm sure Chris is disappointed he didn't catch on with any major league ball clubs, but he's got a chance to go show what he can do, and he'll be noticed and he'll be pursued if somebody needs some arms here pretty soon. Four and nine and 20 starts for the Mets last year, and now the organization has some veteran pitching depth. Those aren't the easiest decisions for a club to make, FP, because you don't want to take some of your prospects and cost kids starts at the minor league level when they need to work every fifth day. And evidently, the Nats feel highly enough about Chris Young to take a shot with him. I think as much as a pitcher as a person. Yeah, he, outstanding. You want people like that in your organization for sure. Well, the organization IQ went up a little bit. You know, you had a Princeton guy. Oh, yeah. Those Ivy leaders. They actually had to go to class. <laughs> Three, two with one out. Espinoza late. That's 86. That must have looked like 92. Wait, LeBlanc dealing right now. Mid Atlantic Sports Report returns Monday, 5 30 to 7. The Nats will be off that day, but Tom Davis, Dave Johnson, Phil Wood, Mel Antonin. We'll preview the White Sox series. Start your night of Nats baseball throughout the season, Monday through Friday, with the Mid Atlantic Sports Report. Here's Wilson Ramos, who bounced out to second base first time. Well, today it's the top of the order's turn, isn't it? Span, Worth, Harper, and Zimmerman. Not only all the hits, but all of the on base. Today. Right. O2. Oh, Ramos has to be protect and swing mode on two strikes. And if you're wondering why Wilson Ramos went back to number 40 this year, that's his number in Venezuela. And he felt like better vibes than number three, switching numbers going to number 40. And 
fresh start for Wilson Ramos in more ways than one. 15 pounds lighter than last year. Yeah. Stronger. Said he's never felt better, even before the surgery, the knee injury. Well, you'll do the rehab of your life coming back from a serious injury. You know, Strasburg would tell you that. Jordan Zimmerman coming back from there. Tommy John surgeries. I mean, the rehab is unbelievably intense. Once you get yourself back, better than ever. Three and two. It's more that range of motion thing. When you go through surgery, you got to stretch that knee and get that range of motion back. Yeah, you're doing squats at you know, ab stuff, lifting weights, stuff you're used to, but you take it to another level. But getting that thing to be flexible again, get the scar tissue out is the worst part. Trying to get Jordan Zimmerman into the batter's box here in the fourth inning. Three balls, two strikes. What a good at bat. Wilson Ramos on base in two games for the third time. Yeah, Wade LeBlanc had a lean going to his dugout with that cutter on the inner half at 84 miles an hour. Thought he had the call. Nice job by Wilson Ramos of turning that line and line up over and getting Jordan Zimmerman to the plate. Jordan struck out looking first time. You know, Carp is a catcher. When you block balls with nobody on and you get a 3 2 pitch, it's borderline. A lot of times, a home plate umpire will give you the advantage yeah. on a close call because you've been working hard behind the plate all day. Maybe blocking balls with nobody on. So spreading goodwill in the back of the batter's box pays off. Yeah, huh? You're saving the umpire ricochets. You build up that good relationship with him. Maybe talking to him back there, and you get the borderline calls. Paul Schreiber appreciating it. It's a pretty good pitch by LeBlanc. One-one to Jordan Zimmerman. Good take. Change up, floating up and away. Now the Nats have him up near 80 pitches in four innings. This is a lineup that will cause headaches. With Span the leadoff man that all the talented bats behind him. In terms of pitchers having to grind out at bats against these guys and vice versa. I went on Master yesterday and was talking about this lineup and how you and I were kind of giggling up here when they ran out to the line on opening day and how it's like a super team, a superpower, like the Russian hockey team almost. I mean, there's no weakness here. Yeah. So I called them the Red Army the other day. When you think about it, it is. I mean, where's the let up in this lineup? Well, let's hope Davey can be like Charlie Manuel four or five years ago, pencil in the same guys every day and say, go play, boys. It's, it's a Red Army. Good luck. That's good. Just watch out for young Olympic teams <laughs> that wear red, white, and blue. And Lake Placid, New York. Yeah. Three and two now. It's become a long inning for LeBlanc. Ramos coaxing a walk. He'll be on the move here. And Jordan Zimmerman will keep things going. What these two hitters, eight and nine, are doing in the fourth inning of a game could have a big effect on how the rest of the afternoon goes here. There were two outs quickly with nobody aboard. Now some of the fans downstairs are starting to pick up on this thing and we're hearing some applause. We've seen already in this series how pitchers with bats could affect things today for the Marlins. It hasn't been good on their side. And finally, Zimmerman fan, but they sure made Wade LeBlanc work through a long 26th pitch inning. On to the fifth, the Nats 3-1.
Thursday, September 8th, Nats Marlins. Bottom of the ninth, after a rain delay, Jason Worth grabbed a bat, tied the game. Well, let me have you listen to it from him. Oh, it was good. It was, uh, had a nice little rain delay, you know. I got a little massage, changed clothes, uh, had a chicken salad, and then uh, then tied it up. It was uh, it was well written. Not many of the 29,000 were still there at that time of the evening. Almost 7 o'clock, the Nats would go on to win it in the bottom of the 10th on a Corey Brown bloop base hit. That was their 86th win of the year. You want to know why the dugout was so fired up? He went straight John Belushi from Animal House. When they told him the tarp was coming off, he grabbed his bat and said, let's do it. Ran out of the clubhouse, had that at bat to back it up. And you saw the enthusiasm from the dugout when he got back. He walked the talk big time. Had a massage and a chicken salad, then tied the game. Another day at the office. Here's Polanco. I mean, just something a little like that, Carp. I've been in those clubhouses for long rain delays. Guys are like, oh, are they going to bang this thing? Are we playing? What's going on? Cancel it. What are we doing here so long? And then to have that guy like Jason Worth, one of the leaders on your ball club, say, you know what? Forget it. Let's go out there and win this thing down by one. Yeah. I mean, that's the little things that he brings to this ball club. Just an attitude like that where maybe there's four or five guys saying, oh, I hope they call this thing off. I got dinner plans tonight. It's the Marlins. You know, we're, we're already in first place by however many games and you know, let's play a doubleheader down the road, and your leader grabs a bat and says, come on, let's do it, and runs out of the clubhouse full speed. <laughs> the Nets were six and a half games up on the Braves that day, by the way, and that was the eighth win. That was the eighth win on what would become an eight and three homestand. And by the way, they were shut out by Ricky Nolasco the next day, so that win was a big one in several respects. Two balls and no strikes to John Carlos Stanton. Jordan hasn't wanted a whole lot to do with him today. He's walked in twice. That's a strike on a fastball, two and one. Told you about that interesting career. Three career hits, all home runs. Five RBIs to go with him. That ball's in the right, but it's going to stay playable. Put a guy on camera, he'll make a play for you. Two outs. Jordan about to throw his 75th pitch with two outs here in the top of the fifth inning at Chile Nationals Park. Dan Heron, Washington debut in Cincinnati tomorrow night against Homer Bailey. Greg Dobbs, ground ball the second, fly ball to left. 0 for 4 on the season. Three career hits against Jordan with a home run. Drills that ball to center. So the Marlins, six base hits. Nice piece of hitting right there. Got a slider out over the plate. Line drive up the middle. Professional at bat. That'll bring in a guy who could tie this game if you make a mistake. Reggiano's hit the ball hard twice. Homer over the scoreboard. Leading off the second. Hot shot to short for the final out of the third. I just showed the ratio. 60% fastball, 40% off speed for Jordan so far today. And that's about right. There were times last year when maybe he fell in love with his off speed at times a little bit too much. A little stint there of about four or five starts where I remember us talking on the air of lots of sliders, lots of curveballs. Steve McCaddy got him back to his fastball, and that's the ratio he'd like to see, about six out of ten fastballs. This one to Ian Desmond. Battled it, kept it in front of him. That's what the coaches tell you to do. Knock it down. Here comes Span with Worth and Harper to follow. Bottom five.
Dway aboard, scored a run today, and the Nats lead the Marlins 3-1. Top of the order. Slots, tables, and dining, the ultimate triple play. Hollywood Casino at Charlestown races. And the most hits in April last two years. Denard Spann right in the thick of that. You know, and that wasn't real easy up there in Minnesota, FP. They don't have a roof anymore. <laughs> it's a little chilly. Yeah, that's a point we haven't made yet. That's a guy that's used to play it in cold weather right there looking at him. Yeah. Last night was nothing for him. Breaking ball drops to the outside corner. So Denard hitting 375 here. Three for eight to start the year. I don't know that you ever get used to playing in cold weather as a baseball player. It's the worst. Born here, raised in Tampa. First rounder by the Twins. You saw he was the 20th overall player taken. 120 stolen bases, 285 batting average in six minor league seasons. So he wasn't exactly a really young guy when he finally made it to the big leagues in 08. He paid his dues. Hit 294 his first season with Minnesota. With a sterling on base percentage of 387, 392 the year after that. That ball is solidly hit out to center, but Ruggiano is waiting. Bottom of the fifth underway. Next Tuesday, April 9th, White Sox here. It's a two for Tuesday. Two for one hot dogs, two for one sodas. Go to nationals.com slash tickets. While supplies last, some restrictions apply. You got excited right there and said two for one hot dogs. That's your favorite food in the whole world. Adam opening day, baby. <laughs> but like I said, at spring training. You better grill them because if you boil them, I'm not coming anywhere near. <laughs> Worth. Left field right there, Juan Pierre. They had him play way off the line. We see a lot of teams in this ballpark play their left field as far off the line as anywhere in baseball. Philadelphia, they do that. Cozy, Houston, they do it. It's funny about that at bat. We had that great shot of Jason Moore sitting on the top step of the dugout studying Wade LeBlanc. Good at bat line drive. It's an out. Nothing to show, but it's supposed to show you good hitters when they're not hitting. Study pitchers. Did his homework. Figured he's going to go up there and look for something first pitch, middle in. Got it. Just hit it right at Juan Pierre. No luck. Bryce Harper now has a 12 game hitting streak against the Marlins with six home runs. So he's hit it hard two more times today. That'll be a strike. So Bryce on the season six for ten, three RBIs. Just a little early for that 75 mile an hour changeup. I'd be clapping too if I caught a line drive off the bat of Bryce Harper. That thing had hair all over it. That's have made LeBlanc work long and hard today. Five strikeouts, two walks, giving up three runs on five hits. Brantley went fastball away, cutter away, curveball back to cutter. He shook all four. What's he got left? Ooh, that one hit. Uh, maybe his manager right in the middle of the back in the dugout. He's a catcher. Former catcher. That's nothing. He probably liked that. And the 0-2. Again, Harper reaches out and strokes it. Donovan Solano waiting for it. So a 1 2 3 inning. Second time LeBlanc has been able to do that today. On to the sixth.
thrower today that we usually see him as. And he's also been able to do, get some defensive things done as well. He's had a nice tempo from the get-go. Fastball command has been yeah. good. Slider hasn't been the best one we've seen with him. But, you know, going right after guys, pound the strike zone, letting his defense work. We've seen that the first two games with Strasburg and Duke Gonzalez. Jordan doing a nice job of including everybody, letting his defense play behind him, not trying to do too much. So, on to the sixth inning. Back to work for the Nats right-hander. About to throw his 80th pitch of the day. And it's drilled to left field. Here comes Harper. Bryce got to it, knocked it down off the bat of Rob Brantley. So Brantley a two-hit day. Marlins are swinging the bats pretty well today against Jordan Zimmerman. Yeah, Rob Brantley with another good at-bat for the Florida Marlins. Bryce Harper coming on hard for that low-line drive. Toughest play for an outfielder. There's that low-line drive right at you. Bryce got a good read, good effort, just didn't stick in the glove. This will show it right here. Yeah, got him right in the heel. Well, he goes in the web. It's an out. Got him in the heel. Popped out. Good effort. Verizon Fios on the Exmo. Lead-off man aboard, Donovan Solano. Marlins bullpen is getting busy now. Former Nat John Rausch. We've got some experience out there with him. Chad Qualls, John Main, Ryan Webb, who we saw last night. That one hit late into the seats on the right side. Donovan Solano one for two, based it up the middle last time. We see a swing like that from a hitter. He's telling you that he's trying to hit that hole between first and second, letting the ball get deep, thinking about going to the right side. Just waited too long on 93. Busted bat's going to fall to left. Jordan Zimmerman giving up his eighth hit of the day. Harper throws in behind the runner. And Rob Brantley stares at him. So the Marlins box score gets a couple of knocks here. They've had six hits from their six, seven, and eight men today. Nothing from their top three. So the pitcher spot is just one spot away now. And Craig Stammen could be firing things up here quickly. Let's see if Echevarria is going to square around right here. Down by two. Austin Kearns on deck. They're not going to square around. That's going to be a 6-3 double play. And Ian Desmond even for a moment thought about something with that runner going to third. So that's huge. Huge. I mean, you're down by two. It's a sixth inning. You've been having trouble scoring runs so far in the first two games of the series. And one run scored here. You would think with a pinch hitter on deck that your eight-hole guy would be an automatic bunt right there to get the tie and run in scoring position. Mike Redmond chooses to let him swing away. Six-three double play. Thanks for coming. Huge, huge turn of events right there. So it's Austin Kearns, the former Nat, who is here 06 through 09. Austin had a lot of injuries his last couple of seasons. His right elbow, his right thumb. His best season was 07 here when he hit 16 homers and drove in 74. I know what Redmond was thinking. Echeverria had two good at bats, two base hits, and having a nice day at the plate. He hit that ball hard, but you know, when you're scuffling to score runs early in the season, and you have a pinch hitter on deck, one like Kearns who can swing the bat. I'm surprised he didn't bunt right there in the sixth. Austin Kearns, 245 in 87 games for the Marlins last year. That ball goes bending outside, two balls and one strike. Jordan Zimmerman's pitch count nearing 90. He's at 87. And a breaking ball fouled out of play. Now he's one pitch away from being out of this inning. Two-two pitch. Right side. Adam LaRoche has it. And he's going to the bag. 
costly decision for the Marlins. The Nationals continue as they've given up only one run this season. Cincinnati tonight. Great American Ballpark. We'll see how the weather factors in. It's supposed to be in the high 50s tomorrow. A little cooler for that ball game tomorrow night. But the ball carries well. Joey Votto, one of the best hitters in all of baseball. Some people think he's the best. Dan Heron, Homer Bailey tomorrow night. Johnny and Ray from the studio with Nats Extra 6:30. We'll join you at 7 o'clock from downtown Cincinnati. Dan Heron. Career record 119 and 97. He'll be making his 287th start. He went 12 and 13 and 30 starts for the Angels last year. He had about 10 days off. That's a challenge for any pitcher. Get back in that rhythm. Get back in that groove. Well, another former net. We just saw Austin Kearns hitting. Here's John Roush pitching. And since he became a full-time reliever with the Nats in 06. He leads all relievers in wins with 34 and 507 games. He's been a workhorse for the Nationals, for Arizona, for Minnesota, Toronto, and the Mets. Yeah, four pitch guy, fastball, slider, curveball, change, fastball, low 90s. Likes the slider, throws it a lot, 84 miles an hour on average. Ryan Zimmerman, Hi. former teammate, leads off. Well, Ryan's had a good day. Two run double, the big blow of this game, and a walk. Slider away from him, trying to beat out an infield hit, and he is there. Ryan Zimmerman has now had base hits in four consecutive at bats with a walk in between. The guy walking in the batter's box right now, Adam LaRoche, says, I'll take one of those. <laughs> or two. He's at every ball in the barrel all season long. LaRoche has. He doesn't have anything to show. Ryan Zimmerman locked in, and he'll take this one all day long. And Placido Polanco made this a lot closer at first base than I thought it was going to be originally. I thought this was a put it in your pocket, infield single all the way. Polanco makes a nice play to make it that close. Ryan Zimmerman now three out of six career against John Roush. And Adam LaRoche, who's two for six against the big right-hander, steps in. Tried to. <laughs> well, as we told you earlier, all the production today, all the base hits from the first four spots in the batting order. Although Wilson Ramos, a walk that just about wore out Wade LeBlanc back in the fourth inning in that number eight hole. Then Jordan Zimmerman had a long at bat. LaRoche has flown out to left twice and hit the ball hard both times.
Well, everybody in the bullpen, back end of the bullpen, has seen work, but Henry hasn't. Craig Stammen hasn't. Zach Duke hasn't worked yet. One ball and two strikes. have him on the infield shaded up the middle a little bit to right field in the outfield and LaRoche hits what they could turn into a double play but Solano got a little over eager he booted a routine play last night and so the Marlins cost themselves an out right there See, that's a mistake of a young player not so much not fielding the ball card but not knowing his runner with Adam LaRoche running to first base the ball was hit firmly there's no need to be in a hurry right there. That double play is going to turn itself because LaRoche not the fastest guy in the world. Solano in a big time hurry right there. Didn't need to be. And I can tell you right now what our old buddy Tommy Hutton saying on their TV show next door. You can't give a good team four outs. And they've made some defensive mistakes today that have helped the Nats and hurt them. Off the end of the bat, Desmond over to the right side, and Dobbs will take care of that. Two outs. Third base. Zimmerman with two down. Danny Espinosa a chance. MLB.tv is celebrating 11 years now. Join the millions of fans and subscribe. Every out-of-market game live online on your favorite mobile and connected device HD quality. MLB.tv is baseball everywhere. Well, it's time for Danny Espinosa to, to collect that first base hit of the year. It'll be a big one right here. Producing an RBI. He's 0 for 9 to start the season. Danny Espinosa against John Rausch, 0 for 3 career. Stepped out, high strike. Well, you can ask for a timeout as a hitter, but. Doesn't mean you get it. Doesn't mean you always get it. And I thought Danny Espinosa asked for it in plenty of time right there. Paul Schreiber disagreed. Somebody's chirping in the Nats dugout right now, asking why he wasn't granted timeout. Paul Schreiber took a couple of steps over there. Espinosa, right field. Jean Carlos Stanton is right there. The Nats have stranded their fourth runner today. On to the late innings. What's the pitching decision coming up here?
Nats on top, 3-1. Game summary brought to you by Mercedes-Benz of Arlington and Mercedes-Benz of Alexandria. Bryce Harper dominating Marlins pitching in this series. Ryan Zimmerman coming alive five times in a row on base. Jordan pitching well enough through 89 pitches, FP, to get the W. Yeah, did a nice job of getting out of some jams. Wade LeBlanc right here with a firm butt back to Jordan. Make a nice play on the spin move throw to Ryan Zimmerman. And he gets Juan Pierre to ground out to Dan Espinosa to end that threat in the fourth. And then we go to the sixth inning. And Mike Redney choosing not to bunt Echeverria. He grounds into a 6-3 unassisted double play. And then Kearns grounds out to Adam LaRoche. So a nice job today. A nice start to the season for Jordan Zimmerman and the nerve of him giving up one run. <laughs> Henry Rodriguez gets the call for the seventh inning here. Maybe Johnson decided at the end of spring training it would be Rodriguez from the right side and not J.C. Romero from the left side. So here comes Henry who pitched in 35 games with a 583 ERA strikeout pitcher. Can he harness that control. Yeah three pitch guy fastball hard 12 6 curveball in the mid to upper 80s fastball mid to upper 90s change up low 90s. Faces Juan Pierre. Tyler Clippard. Mr. Eighth inning himself. But you just wonder because it looks like to me he's warming up with urgency. Any signs of trouble at all here. We'll see Clippard in the seventh. Juan Pierre against Henry Rodriguez who throws it upstairs. Juan Pierre one for two career. With a strikeout against the Nats. 26 year old right hander. That's a good one in there at 93. I think the one thing we've learned about Henry Rodriguez, although he looks very calm every time he's out there, works very deliberately. The wheels are spinning. And it's up to him to relax, find that strike zone. Juan Pierre in the air to right for Jason Worth. And maybe get a first hitter out. Huge right there for Henry Rodriguez. Nice job. Next up, Placido Polanco. In their matchups, Henry has walked him twice in three at bats. But it's a cold day. He's not a power hitter. And this is the last guy you want to give a pass to ahead of Giancarlo Stanton. So go right after this guy. With quality pitches, of course. Holds on to that fastball too long. Ball two. Quality strike on the outer edge. A veteran move by Polanco right there, squaring around, trying to. Draw ball three, get the tie and run to the plate in the form of the big guy. Out to short, might have busted his bat. Desmond all over it. And that is huge with a big home run threat coming in. Toyota case for kids again this year. The D.C. area Toyota dealers helping children and their families every time a Nats pitcher gets a strikeout. Thirty seven dollars to the Children's Inn at the National Institutes of Health. Stanton is 0 for 4 career against Rodriguez with two strikeouts. Foul tip. Strike one. It goes off speed. 81. That first curveball from him. Not bad. All fastballs up to that point. Pretty good rip. There's an establishment on the corner of 6th and Pennsylvania called Mr. Henry's. 
<laughs> and if he goes one, two, three right here and he has a clean inning, he's going to be Mr. Henry the rest of the year. One ball and two strikes to say the least a power matchup here. Tried to spin a breaking ball on him. Ball two. It's good take. That ball was a strike for a while. It wasn't like it was all the way out of the strike zone early out of his hands and Stanton just spit on it at the end. His track had it better than it really looked. Another slight piece there. Mr. Henry, one, two, three. Nice job. And Mr. Giancarlo, not real happy about it. That's a good pitch when it crosses home plate. We're going to the bottom of the seven. It's the time for the stretch. That's on top three to one. Henry Rodriguez with a one, two, three, seventh inning. Now the bullpen set up. PNC Bank for the Achiever and you. As we check in on our buddy Matt Skoll, saw him some in spring training. Hagerstown and Potomac, low A, high A, minor league player of the year with 56 extra base hits and 104 RBIs. He is ready. Call him up. Climbing the ladder with that RBI total. Bottom eight, Ramos looks like Bernadina, and then Span against John Rausch. Wilson Ramos, so for fun, over oh one with a walk today. So in the season, one for three, two walks. Looking to drive it. Didn't miss by much. Tough play in the corner. Pretty good effort right there by the ball girl. Trying to pick it. There's the shark. have been out hit eight to six but Jordan Zimmerman over six innings stranded eight Miami base runners wiped out another on a double play ball quality pitching when he needed it and there's Wilson Ramos hitting the ball extremely hard right up the middle did he just kind of look locked in that whole at bat just missed the foul ball straight back just missed the line drive down the right field line and then gets a base hit up the middle Looked very hitterish that whole at bat. Stayed back nice. Took a little out of his swing in two strike mode. Put the ball in play. Good things happen. Nice piece of hitting right there by Wilson Ramos. Stay hot. Yeah, that was his first career at bat against John Roush. Now they'll go with Steve Lombardozzi, more of a bunt 
and move the ball around hitter. And if you're at home right now thinking, well, Roger Bernardina could bunt. As you look at Mike Dunn getting loose for the Marlins right now, they're only lefty in the bullpen. Bernardina more of a base hit bunter. When he squares around early for a sacrifice, not as effective. So if Davey Johnson, Trent Jewett thinking about button right here, Lombardozzi's your guy. Steve Lombardozzi flied to center in a pinch hitting appearance on Monday. Base hit bunters don't always make good sacrifice bunters. It's a whole different deal. That one boring in on Steve, and he had to fight it off. There's something sometimes carp about getting that bat out there early in a sacrifice bunt situation where you think about it, think about it, think about it, ball comes to where in a base hit bunt, you're squaring late trying to hide it. It's a whole different technique. Lays one down, deadens it perfectly. Ramos can cruise to second. Point well taken, FP. And that's great execution by Steve Lombardozzi. Nicely done. Little things like that keep you in the big leagues for 10 years. And obviously, Steve Lombardozzi thinks of himself as an everyday guy, but when you're a bench guy and you come off the bench and the whole ballpark knows your bunt, you get the bunt down, you're fundamentally sound like Lombardozzi is. He played for a long time in this league. Nicely done. John Roush would give way to Mike Dunn here. Hey, why not? Denard Spann career one for one against Roush with a home run. So Big John leaves. And this call to the bullpen packaged by the UPS store. We love logistics. Roush gone, done on in a moment. to their 3-1 lead. We'll set the matchups for you in a moment. What two-for-one hot dog night is for me, $5 and peanut night is for our crew. It happens Wednesday, 7.05. Nats White Sox, $5 beer and peanut night. Nationals.com slash tickets to check it out. And that, of course, is while supplies last, some restrictions apply. Denard Spann will face left-hander Mike Dunn who pitched a scoreless eighth inning here on Monday. Gave up a base hit to Denard Spann right up the middle. And that was the first time they'd ever matched up. And two days later, actually two games later, three days later, here they are again. And Denard won for three with a bunt base hit and a run scored. Wilson Ramos having a word with Donovan Solano. Yeah, to your point, yeah, that base hit, 294 career hitter off lefties. I done a, a two pitch guy, fastball slider, fastball mid 90s.
So Denard ahead in the count here. Slaps off the backstop and over to third base is Wilson Ramos with one out. 93 sailing away. That big 90 foot mistake right there. Wild pitch right here by Dunn. Look out, Denard Span. And Wilson Ramos advances at third base. Runner on third, less than two. Mike Redman has to bring his infield in, which opens up a bunch of holes for Denard Span. So, yeah, a wild pitch right there. Could prove costly to the Marlins. Well, this series has shown a difference. I mean, none of these games have been blowouts. Two nothing, three nothing, three one. But almost every little thing in this series has been done by the Nationals and not done by the Marlins. Two zero pitch infield in. Chad Qualls, possibly for Jason Worth, who's next. They'll look that one all the way in, three and one now. Get contact there. I don't know if that was a 3 1 slider or what, 86 miles an hour. Didn't do a whole lot for Mike Dunn, but may have acted more like a changeup than anything else. Span sitting 3 1 heater, got 86. This career lefties have only hit 236 against him. And with Jason Worth waiting, runner at third, one out, a chance for the Nationals to really increase this lead. 3 2 pitch. And Denard let that one get deep before fouling it away. Not afraid to hit with two strikes, not afraid to go deep in the count. You see why right there. No stride. Took that ball right out of Rob Brantley's glove at the last second. They all pitch again. Span takes the walk. First and third, one out. And we'll see if that does it for Mike Dunn with Jason Worth coming in. Boy, the more we see of Denard Span throughout spring training, first three games of the year, um, Mike Rizzo did a great job of going out and getting the leadoff hitter. This is not an easy take in the 3 2 count left on left. And look at him just look that ball in the glove. Breaks out of the zone at the last second. Great at bat again from Denard Span. Right. Excuse me, Carl. We got a great glimpse of him going in the gap yesterday, too, just on the easy cruise to that ball in right center field. Mike Dunn flew out Jason Worth in the eighth inning on Monday, but Jason's two for three career against him. Wants to elevate and drive the ball somewhere. The base runner there. Nats might be trying to run themselves out of the double play possibility here. Hey, you've got a two run lead. You can do things, can't you? Yeah. Make things happen. Jason Worth, a guy used to driving in runs throughout the history of his career. I, I'd be surprised if they put anything on, but you never know. He's looking to drive a ball to the outfield. Stay in the middle of the park. Three one Nationals, even though they've been out hit eight seven. 
They've got Worth played around to the right in the outfield. 1 0 count here. Done a long look at Span, and Worth will take a fastball in there. Target inner half. That ball is rocked to left center. See you later. 6 1 Nationals. I mean, give Wilson Ramos credit for starting the inning up. Give Steve Lombardozzi credit for getting him into scoring position. Denard Span taking a tough 3 2 pitch for ball four, setting the stage for Jason Worth to deliver big time. You can look at the Red Army right there. They came to play today. That was a huge at bat right there from Jason Worth. Now you can rest your bullpen a little bit. You have a five run cushion going in the eighth and ninth. Big blow right there. Well, Mike Redman had a right hander, Chad Qualls ready. He left done in to face Worth, and now it's six to one. Look for a fastball middle in, turn the fan on, got it right where he was looking, and he knew right off the bat it was gone. Extension, head down, transfer of weight, back foot on the ground. Unlike the guy in the box right now, Jason Worth having a nice day. Bryce Harper jammed and fouls it away. And we talked about it last night, Carp. Baseball gods, right? You do a nice job in the outfield. You help your team win a game. What happens the next day? You get a couple of knocks, a home run. You do things the right way. Good things happen to you. Jason Worth with a big day today here with the bat, and yesterday was a glove. Nasty breaking ball away. Bryce Harper gone, two outs. Did Harper influence Redmond's decision to leave Mike Dunn in? Yeah, probably. Too late for the Marlins now. And now Ryan Zimmerman will be the hitter. He's had a perfect day. Two hits, two RBIs, a walk. Yeah, I was pretty shocked he left him in to face Worth. Ryan Zimmerman looking good at the plate today. It all started last night in Ryan's third at bat. He had lined out to the outfield earlier in the evening. Then he had that triple RBI single after that. And then today, two run double, walk, infield hit. And a bouncer. Two balls, one strike. One of the other things a lead like this can do for you when you get to the ninth inning, it could give you a chance to give Soriano a day off. Yeah, that was my point. You get that five run lead. Tyler Clippard's still getting hot in the Nats bullpen. I mean, you could give Stam in the ninth inning to get him going. Good call. Two balls and two strikes, and Zimmerman hits it well to left. That's in front of Juan Pierre, and Ryan Zimmerman has a three hit day. He's now five for five with a walk in his last six plate appearances. A lot of numbers to get inside of. Jeep and the unique brand of freedom you'll only find in the full line of Jeep vehicles. Visit Jeep.com. So the numbers are piling up now. Now the Nats have another three-hit inning. 
They've out hit the Marlins 9 to 8 with Adam LaRoche stepping in. He's 0 for 3 today, a hard luck 0 for 3. So we'll get you to some numbers and digits here shortly. As the Nats are piling up some offensive production today, upstairs for a ball. Things happen at the ballpark today. <laughs> California guy who doesn't like the wave. <laughs> you know what? If that's keeping 25,000, 123 warm, good for them. By the way, how about the Nats this series? Almost 97,000 for the three game series, an average of 32, 222. Hats off to the folks here Monday. Last night and today, especially these last two games, it's been brisk. LaRoche gets jammed and pops it up. Brantley, that's it. Three run, seventh inning, all driven in on Jason Worth's second hit of the day and the season and his first three RBIs. It was a no doubter. Going into the top of the eighth inning. I talked a moment ago about those cheap numbers. How about the generated numbers by the top four in the lineup today? Span two for three with a walk. Worth two for four, three run homer. Harper two for four RBI single. Zimmerman three for three with a walk and a two run double. The big boys at the top getting it done today. Yeah, talk about the offense. You can talk about the pitching. You can talk about the defense in this series. It doesn't matter. Pick it out of a half, but this series shaped up so nicely for Davey Johnson, and this is what we talked about in spring training: short ball games, six, seven inning ball games with the bullpen you have. Have that lead late, and it's going to be a long season for whoever's playing the Nats. Dobbs, Ruggiano, and Brantley here, top eight. Dobbs one for three, base it up the middle last time. Tyler Clippard goes to work. Drew Storen had the eighth inning last night. Tyler, a walk, a strikeout, and a scoreless eighth on Monday. Steve Ciszek, you love to see them give their closers some work when they're down by five. Change up high, one ball, one strike. Yeah. 
Check swing. It's a swing, says Eric Cooper. Tomorrow night, Dan Heron, Homer Bailey. Maybe Johnson's ball club at a place where he had great success as a skipper. Cincinnati. Reds play. Beat the Angels today 5-4, to four, so they'll be 2-1 and one when the Nats face them tomorrow evening. Washington came real close to sweeping two series from them last year. Three out of four here, two out of three there. And Tyler Clippert can take some good major league hitters and make them look off balance. A great changeup right there, and that's the one that gets the swing through strike three. He's the one down in the zone to left. He's that fades away off the fastball up. And we talked about the arm speed, the angle with his delivery. Tough to pick up, and you see the grip right there. Great shot got inside of that changeup. Same arm speed as a fastball. Just almost 10 miles an hour slower. There's Justin Ruggiano who's hit the ball sharply three times today. First pitch pop-up playable Adam LaRoche. And for Tyler Clippert, a couple of quick outs. The Potomac Nationals open tomorrow at Fitzner Stadium. All three opening weekend games, fans receive a magnet schedule for the year. And the best fireworks Saturday and Sunday. Kids eat free. Head to PotomacNationals.com or head down 395 to 95 down to Woodbridge, Virginia. Rob Brantley, two for three today. We've been impressed with this guy throughout this series. You know what's nice about the little three-game road trip to Cincinnati? The Nats, it's a, it's a little thing, but it's a big thing. They skated on opening days. As a ball club, you could have two or three opening days where you have all the pomp and circumstance. Yeah. You have to run out to the line. The only opening day they have this year is the one they had right here at home. So little road trip, get used to your gray unis, and then come back to your home ballpark. Yeah. That's a nice way to start the season. You could go on a seven-day road trip. You go on a ten-day road trip. You can have an opening day at home, two on the road. Hard to get into your routine that way, but the way the schedule's shaped up for the Nationals right now, it's a nice way to start the season. Yeah, last year they opened in Chicago, and then I think the Nats were at opening day in New York and then had another one here. And, and players will tell you they don't like it. I mean, one opening day is great. You get excited for it, but then you have one five days later or four days later, and the Jets fly over again, and you're running out to the line, and then it's all the stuff before the game. Players like routine, and the Nationals are lucky enough this year to have one opening day at home, and now you can get into your routine. In the air to left, off the bat of Brantley. Bryce Harper circling under it, and it's a 1 2 3 eighth inning for Tyler Clifford. This ball club is hitting on all cylinders right now. Brought to you by PNC Bank. For the achiever in you. And by DentaQuest. Affordable coverage for priceless smiles. Ask your broker about DentaQuest. South Capitol Street on a cold afternoon. And Tyler Clifford 
two scoreless 2013 innings under his belt already. Don't miss a defining moment of Nats baseball this year. Alerts delivered direct from Masson to your mobile phone. Text Nationals to 29292. Steve Ciszek, last year when he was 25 years of age, established himself as the Miami closer. 15 saves, he won five games. 2.69 ERA, 68 strikeouts in 64 innings. He's herky jerky and he's funky. <laughs> you said it. And he's got a good fastball, too. A guy that throws from down under, good stuff. And whatever you just said, I agree. But Ian Desmond's three out of five against him, and he'll lead off here in the eighth. Guys that throw three quarter submariners like that, they don't throw hard, but his fastball averaged 92 miles an hour last year. He can get up there at 94, and the slider to go with it's nasty. By the way, a footnote on Tyler Clipper that inning nine pitches, seven strikes, 12 over seven for Henry. The inning before that, Desmond Espinosa Ramos, Ian and Danny both 0 for 3 today. Wilson Ramos has had a good afternoon. <laughs> Fastball in there to Desmond. One ball, two strikes. Hugh Gonzalez has definitely got a message for him. Wilson Ramos talking to him. Yeah, by the way, Worth tied Gio for second on the club with that home run. <laughs> Gio giving power hitting advice now? <laughs> yeah. Did you see me last night go deep? Did you see it, huh? Did you? Did you? <laughs> Wind was blowing straight in. By the end of the season, the wind will be blowing in about 70 miles an hour when he tells the story about yeah. his home run last night. Yeah, yeah, I hit it halfway up the seats out there. There's a small hurricane, and I went through it for a home run. Yeah. Guys from Hialeah know about hurricanes. Yeah. Desmond strikes out on a fastball from the right-handed sidewinder Steve Ciszek. Today's copyrighted broadcast. Presented by authority of the Washington Nationals Baseball Club and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Washington Nationals. So Henry Rodriguez got some work today and Craig Stammen will have the ninth inning assignment here with a five run lead at least. Chile in Cincinnati tomorrow night. Last time I checked, it was supposed to be about 58 during the day. Probably low 50s by game time tomorrow night. So probably very similar to what we have here. And then it looks like a warming trend for D.C. early next week when the guys get home. Yeah, upper 70s. Sweet. What does that feel like? I mean, it wasn't even upper 70s in Vieira. <laughs> It was not. And Ciszek fans another. So he's doing a little lab work for later in the season when he may have a ninth inning assignment with a lead against the Nats. Yeah, just tough to pick up that release point. He hides the ball so well behind his body. And then three-quarter release, that 92 gets on you. Did a nice job for a struggling Heath Bell last year. Yeah, he really bailed them out after Bell had some serious bumps in the road. On. Marlins went into that season loaded for Bear, didn't they? Just didn't work out. On the field or off. Now, I said something in spring training. I said that's either going to be really good down there this year, or it's going to be really bad. That was that was one breath after you said the Mets are going to be better than everybody thinks and you went two for two on that my friend. Well sometimes you get lucky. 
Ramos out to the shortstop in a 1 2 3 eighth inning for Steve Cishek. Craig Stammen to nail down a series sweep if the Nats can pull it off. Exmos all over the ballpark. We're going to have a little fun with it right now. And in case you live under a rock and you miss Bryce Harper's at bats this series, we're going to show them to you in Exmo. Look at the extension, head down, a couple of home runs on opening day. Line drives all over the campsite all series long. So digging the Exmo, digging the swing of Bryce Harper. Quite a series for Bryce. Six for 12. He goes two for four every day. Two homers, three RBIs. Craig Stammen. Storybook season for this guy from Ohio. 59 games, 88 innings. You know, we forget that Craig struck out 87 guys in those 88 innings. And an ERA of 234, won six games out of the bullpen. His mom and dad are here for the series. His mom told me last night, people keep calling saying, well, what game should we buy tickets for in Cincinnati to see Craig? She said, he's a reliever. We don't know. <laughs> buy him for all three games. And what a good job he did. Now he's 29 years of age. He's had a birthday in March. And he's come a long, long way for a 12th rounder back in 05. Craig really paid his dues in this organization. Yeah, fastball in the 90s, slider in the 80s, curveball in the 70s. Three decades of good pitches, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, he's old school, so it makes sense. Up and in, three and one. A Danny Echeverria, the shortstop is next, and then they'll hit for the pitcher. They still have Chris Coughlin and young Chris Valeka in the dugout. And Craig Stammen, who doesn't usually do that, walks the leadoff man. And of course, here at the ballpark, Johnny and Ray. They've been braving some cold temperatures out there in left field. Hats off to you gentlemen. Good to have the crew all back and Johnny and Ray will have Nats extra for you. Last night Johnny was wondering if Ray was going to eat him. It was so cold out there. <laughs> hey by the way Johnny thanks for the Babe Ruth footage. We really enjoyed that. Yeah, Johnny was the uh, third base cameraman. Videographer on that. Yeah. that. Up the middle. They'll have to hurry for two. Desmond will get it done on a 6-3. And the Nationals have turned five double plays in this series.
Yeah, two unassisted six threes in the same game. How many times do you see that? A couple of balls have taken Ian Desmond right towards the bag. It's always tricky with the footwork in the bag. You see him bobbling that ball a little bit, just touching the inside of second base. And once again, there's Adam LaRoche on the backside. One out to go for a sweep. And the Nationals are trying to close out three full ball games with very, very little given up. How impressive has this been? Competition will be a lot stiffer over the weekend. But we found out this last year this ball club can play with anybody. Yeah, I, I think great teams do what they're supposed to do against the teams they're supposed to do it against. And if that makes any sense, yeah. you know what I mean, though, if you're playing a lesser opponent, maybe a team coming off a tough year, you can't let them think at any time they're in it. And then when you're playing a team that's maybe coming off a good year like the Reds, same goes. Can't let them think they're in it any time. Pedal to the metal all season long for six months. See what happens. These two teams split the season series nine and nine last year. And the Nats trying to get the sweep. Harper back and back. And this one is over. Nationals win it six to one. 27 innings of pitching. One run given up. That is really something. Greg Stammen puts the lid on this one. It's on to Cincinnati. Final words from the booth in just a moment.